Rage on that beat, going crazy. If you're into car audio and you watch either TikTok or YouTube, you probably know who Jerry Jocko is, or Jerry Ain't Loud is what he's called. He's got some really impressive videos of his demos. Well, his wife had a backup amplifier that was being repaired by Mark Kennedy. And Jerry said, hey, you want to test this amp for your YouTube channel? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So the amp we're looking at is the Vital Power VP700.1. And back when it was introduced, it was around $2,000. Now, this is by the parent company Addictive Audio, and they claim that all their products are made and engineered in the U.S. If they're just plain out lying to you. Later in the video, we'll get to the part we show the internals of the amplifier, and you'll see that this is a typical Korean design used by plenty of manufacturers. Now, when you look at the manual, they say, Addictive Audio, if you're installing an amplifier of this magnitude, there is no need to entertain you with the owner's manual. If you're not familiar with battery banks, high output alternators, low pass, subsonic filters, gain settings, and quality zero gauge wire, do not attempt installation. Also, do not pay attention to the diagram they provide in this so-called manual, which does not even show you the right place to hook up the power wires with the 250 amp fuse. If you do this, yes, you're going to have a problem. We have sort of a problem here. <laughs> Got it! <he>. Got it! <he. laughs> Alright, back to the serious part here. Ratings 2,000 watts at 4 ohms, 3,800 at 2 ohms, or 7,000 at 1 ohm, or 8,000 at 1 ohm, 16 volts. There's also a 16 volt version that will give you 9,000 watts at 18 volts. Now there's several different amplifiers that are very similar to this one in design and I'm going to show you a few of them here on the screen. Now they may not be exactly the same as the one we're showing today but they're very similar with the uh, outputs and the caps and pretty much the layout everything like that. And before I showed you Phoenix Gold the one and it appears the one that I had looked very similar to the amplifier we're showing today and also like the team pie which I'm going to show you in the future. On one end of the amplifier here we have the inputs and the selection switches, inputs and outputs with RCAs, power and protect LEDs, gain control from 0.2 up to 6 volts, subsonic 10 hertz to 50 hertz, bass boost 0 to 9 dB but it does not give us a frequency. We also have the remote connection for the remote bass knob, low pass filter 250 down to 35 hertz, phase control, also a switch for output master or input slave, the RCA connection for that, and then we have the speaker outputs on the right side. Now there were adapters to change those 8 gauge terminals into 4 gauge for 25 bucks. On the opposite end you'll see the 3 or triple 1 alt inputs for the power and ground. Also the remote connection is right in the very center. They are spaced wide enough to use dual inputs, at least for the center connection. On the other ones, maybe not so much. Again, make sure you check very closely before hooking this up where the power connections are and where the ground are. You want to make sure you go into the right terminals. Don't follow the guide that they show you in the manual. Now, the top of the amplifier has this aluminum panel. has two screws that will pop out. I assume this is to make it, you know, kind of unique for vital power. Since there were so many amplifiers, it were pretty much just like this. And even today, you can still get amps that are just like this. Now, as far as dimensions go, approximately 33 and a half length, 12 inches width, and about 3 inches on the height and the millimeter equivalents there as well. Now, we'll talk about the settings here for the amp, Donna. We have the amp plugged in. Let's talk about the different switches. So... By default, this is how we have it set up. The gain is matched to the head unit with 9 dB overlap using DD1+. Subsonic filter is set to minimum. Low pass filter is set to the highest setting or the maximum. Bass boost is set to minimum. Phase is set to zero. And of course, this is set to master since it is the master of the only amp we're using. Now let's fire up the good old SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno to do our RMS power output testing of this amplifier. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for links to Wilson Audio merch. Smash me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this content. More like it coming all the time. Now let's talk about the Dyno test. There's three different tests, certified, uncertified, and dynamic. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point. And dynamic is a dynamic tone mimicking IHF 202 standard. 
So we're clamping one of the power wires here. There are three different power wires, actually four, because I got this one doubled up, going to this amplifier. So we're going to multiply the clamp numbers we see times three. Also, for those who haven't seen these videos before, the amp dyno displays three things, the wattage output, the ohm load, and the resulting voltage for the test. So let's start out with a four ohm test. Amplifier is rated 2000 watts at 13.8 volts. Here we go, certified test again takes us up to 1% distortion. And this amp meets that rated power plus some. Again, the voltage is a little high here. This is a big boy amp, so we would assume if you're gonna use an amp like this, you're probably gonna use lithium and probably have plenty of voltage and a high output alternator and all that stuff. As far as uncertified goes up to the clipping point, we get 2,894 watts where it's rated 2,000. So again, uh, plenty of power here. Dynamic sends a pulse tone of 40 hertz into the amplifier. And it keeps counting up. 2700 yep 2700 at 14.74 now as far as efficiency goes with the certified test we measured 76 percent two ohms the amp is rated 3800 watts at 13.8 let's see what we get into the certified test here 3956 so we do get the rated power a little bit higher voltage again 14.62 Let's reset the dyno here for the uncertified run. And wow, look at that difference. Almost 5,000 right at it. 49.82 at 14.56. Again, those who are using this type of amplifier are probably going to use the uncertified numbers because you're going to go up to clipping. A lot of cases using these with subwoofers. Dynamically, 5,082 watts at 14.6 volts. What about that efficiency? We measured right at 67%, which is not all that good uh, for a Class D amplifier. One ohm amp is rated 7,000 watts at 13.8. Let's see if we can get that 7,000 watts here. And we're trying to keep our voltage right around 14.4, actually a little under, 75.26 at 14.34 so it does its rated power plus a little more now let's try uncertified test 7707 and again the voltage is around 14.3 i want it to be close to 14.4 as possible um, just because you guys are complaining if the voltage is too high but you also can voltage you you'll complain if it's too low so i can't win either way Dynamically, 9,145 watts at 14.4. Very good. Efficiency, 67%. Again, at 1%, not the best. We'll show the results here. Again, we're just kind of showing numbers that we've already covered. If you stick around to the very end of the video, I will run the amp at 0.8, so you can watch that run. Let's figure out what's inside. I'd say lots of parts, yo. Definitely, let's take off the screws on the bottom here. And let's pry the bottom panel off. The bottom panel on this amplifier is beefy, as well as the amplifier itself. You can see the chokes there for the output. Plenty of reserve capacitance. The six tor toroidal transformers for the power supply. The rails run on 200 volt, 1800 microfarad capacitors. These are 85 degrees Celsius. I'd like to see 105, honestly. And um, yeah, it's a typical Korean design used over and over and over on many different amps. This one, unfortunately, is not quite as efficient as I've seen with some other ones, though. Things that we like about it, rated power plus. It has a triple 1.0 inputs. The amp is linkable if you need to link multiples of these together. I can't see why you'd need to do that, but hey, you can. Has a fat heat sink, which did not even get warm. And the amp is quiet. The fan never came on, never had any issues with that. Could be better. This is big and heavy. No Tiffany RCAs. 8-gauge speaker outputs. Probably okay uh, with 8-gauge, but 4-gauge would be nice. It takes power to make power. You're not going to be able to use an amp like this on a factory electrical system. And this has a generic design, so that's good or bad depending on how you're looking at it. So thanks to Jerry for letting me test out this Vital Power VP700.1. If you want to see more big boy amps actually have the Team Pie 
7500, which is a Chinese clone of this amplifier coming to a Big D channel near you. Will Snotty Labs for the win. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Vital Power VP700, let's try 0.8 dynamic, 40 hertz. Eleven thousand four hundred ninety eight watts. <laughs>